Hey YouTube, it's Chuck Cook. I've been wanting to make a video about the barn shed I built in 2019. It was an amazing project and I would do it all over again and I highly encourage anyone considering it to just jump in and do it. I bought a set of plans from Phil the Shed Man at CheapSheds.com. Please use his website. He was so great. He emailed me if I had questions. I, you know, the, the plans are not expensive. They're dirt cheap. And, and you, you kind of are able to look at the pictures, watch his videos online, and kind of frame your scenario around a shed size and the steps to just get going if you've not ever done something like this before. Like me, I'd never built a, a large uh, construction project like this. I built a 14 by 28 shed. It came out great, and I would do it all over again. I set this video up with a bunch of screen captures. I'm trying to do a voiceover to kind of keep up with them in the process of it. So I appreciate your patience as I try to narrate as the pictures go by. I, I think you'll get the sense of it. I, the reason I'm doing this is because when I was watching all the videos trying to build this shed, there were a lot of missing pieces I wish I had seen. So there may be more here than most of you want to see, but the point is if there's somebody in the middle of a project and they want to kind of see how I did something Hopefully there's a picture or a little bit of commentary here that might just give you that last little piece of information. Let's get going. Everything starts with a good foundation. I got these four inch blocks from the local hardware store and laid out some strings leveling uh, the terrain so I could stack some rocks underneath them and pile the, uh, the, the block up so it was level. Once the block was installed, basically put the framing around it and leveled it and got the joists all set in place. The trusses are all homemade and I had to create a rack just to support them. Got the plywood on the floor, set up my jig. The trusses are made in a jig on the floor and the plans describe this really, really well. It's a nice big flat surface to lay out your angles and make every single truss identical. You can see I'm storing here in the yard on this uh, jerry-rigged truss just to keep them straight. Here you can see the trench I dug for my power, water, and internet. I've got the uh, ends all framed up with hardy board, and my first wall is ready to go, framed with the door and two windows, and laid out, ready to be raised. A couple of the tools set up here on the edge here as we raise, get ready to raise our first wall. You can see I've got some uh, door paneling. And once again, I'm showing the trusses here. This is all just a snapshot. The first wall is raised, I got the door in there, but the door has not been cut out. And you can see how I'm framing it from the sides to support the wall. And from the back side, you can see how the door and the windows are all framed, but not yet cut. Here's how I kind of kept my supplies as I ordered them. I did all this from scratch. Built the second wall in place, got the trusses there, just regular standard framing. Uh, the windows uh, and all of the uh, top plates and bottom plates are in there trying to keep everything square as possible from the ground all the way up. Second wall's there, again, supporting it from the edge, starting to actually look like the, uh, the size and shape. This is a 14 by 28 shed. Interesting thing, you see my line there. I have support overhead from an oak tree, which was very helpful in all processes of this shed build because I was able to be supported from above. As you can see, I'm raising the hardy board and nailing it to the outside here and the hardy boards going up on the walls. Starting to take a little bit of a shape there. Hardy board going around, no roof yet. So now I had to have some neighbors help me get these uh, ends up. This is the one part that wasn't a one man job. I had to have some neighbors flip these suckers over and hang them upside down. I got a little uh, movie clip here to show you so you can kind of see what it took to get this going up. Each one of those weighed about 500 pounds. Hold on, let's pause here and let everybody get on the inside that needs to get on the inside. Okay? Okay? Oh, yeah. Okay, so then let's get on the other side. Can you can pivot off of that one. Yep. bit of a victory claim there at the end but you can see once you get these wings up and on the walls the weight is supported and you can kind of work them all the way down to the end without necessarily having complete weight support 
but just gotta make sure the outside edge is facing the right direction so when you flip it vertical, it, it's correctly aligned and on the outside. That's definitely the hardest part is getting these ends on. Uh, a couple men and uh, a little bit of time and it'll work out. You can see here how we're having to move this. Each of those ends weighs about 500 pounds. Uh, it's not quite something you can do by yourself. They're strong once they have the hardy board on the outside edge, if that's the surface you're using. You just kind of get the wings up on the edge and work them into position so they're ready to flip vertically. And that's pretty much you know, you know, how it works. Um, with the right manpower, it's not too hard. You can see here how the hardy board is facing this direction. As you flip it vertically, it'll be correctly put on the outside. Framed in the fourth wall, so it can be used as support and for framing. Um, and once that is in place, you're ready to flip them vertically. You can see I've already cut out the holes for the windows and the vents. They're all ready in place. A couple snapshots here we're flipping up. There's a good view of how the overlap is going to happen and the 2 by 4 is in place to hold it vertically so that once it's up there, it's not going anywhere. I've got a clip coming up here that shows pretty much how, how we did it. Use some ropes, use some levers, just kind of flipping it and then uh, checking it square and then screwing it in place. Let's check it out and I'll let you watch it as it happens. You can probably see how we've got some 2x4s that we're just kind of using as levers to push it vertically. It's already anchored in place space, and we've got a rope yeah, also supporting the weight from above. It's purely a convenience. I recognize in every build you're not going to have a hard wood perfectly placed over the top of your shed, but this year was right. nice. Well, what for me. What I'm going to do, I'm going to give this to Scott, because I'm going to go fit it with the corner. You need to go a little bit more of us before we get out of here. It's almost top. vertical, yeah, but there's still a lot of weight there on those stiff arms being pushed push from behind, <laughs> and the angle right, of my rope isn't quite let perfect, me, uh, let me it's not necessarily open. leaning it forward, we'll go out there, but make you sure can see the up. lip is coming over there, that's the water ceiling <laughs> there, hanging yeah. over, and now I'm just climbing up there, checking for square to make sure okay, that the wind is right there at the edge, and uh, it's all lined up just right. It's amazing how when you measure twice, cut once, and build something such you know, the size of this, and this is definitely the largest yep, project so I've ever going. done by myself. Uh, now, you know, things usually work out. over center with the time. line, so the line might have to be released to continue to push a little bit. Now, so I, I'm basically telling the guys they just keep need to push pushing. it up a little right bit further, and now it's vertical. You can see it's actually leaning up against the 2 and by 4 the board now. Um, And now right. I've just basically got to move so my scaffolding now. in place so I can get some screws uh, and support the weight. And her other side's a little. Yeah. Yeah, I got to go off. There you go. Nail guns out, tacking it in place, and basically the hardest part of the shed is now done. I, I did almost everything else from this point on by myself, um, and up to this point everything was done by myself. But it really starts to take shape when you can see the ends in place, and you've got your cutouts for all of your uh, rafters, and you got your trusses built, um, but yet there's still a lot of work ahead. I did use a lot of uh, overhead ropes, harnesses, scaffolding, and ladders. I'm, I'm on top of a lot of things during the length of this project. I've got knee pads on. I've always got my harness on. And when I wasn't safely and secured, I always tried to tie it into a rope hanging from overhead. I recognize that's not going to be possible for everyone, but it sure was convenient for me uh, to do things that might not necessarily have been safe. You can even see the rope there is attached to me uh, coming back from behind me as I'm kind of standing up there high with the nail gun working on these first few trusses. A little bit of a smile of success there. I have to give credit to my wife for taking a lot of these pictures as I was the one doing the work and she was the one documenting most of it. But as the first few trusses went up and you started putting some of those two by fours in there to hold them square, it really started to take shape. It felt like I was building an arc uh, upside down <laughs> once the ribs were in there. And if you notice, you know, just, just as the plan said, I'm just using OSB board for the, uh, the joints there to give them a little extra strength with some glue. Um, they're strong, they're square, and they're all identical because of that um, jig that was built on the floor at the very beginning of the project. Pretty much got it all framed out here. Starting to put a little bit of plywood up so in the So I just attic. finished getting the last bit of the rafters up. Had to get all my loft planking up. I've got 
the stair access point right here and a temporary floor just against the end. And I got a temporary floor at the other end just so I can work. But the plan is to have four foot openings on either end. Yeah, so I've got stairs on one end and an access at the other end. So I left four feet open on either end of the loft just so you can kind of see in there. There's my gorilla cart, and I tell you what, if everybody doesn't have a gorilla cart and is still using a wheelbarrow, I highly recommend you get something new. Here's, I, I, I almost didn't put this in here because here I am standing on top of a ladder on top of scaffolding, but I want you to know I've got a harness and I'm tied in. And if you're harnessed and tied in, you're not going anywhere, and I'm up on the high end of a ladder trying to get these high ends done. As a DIYer, you know, you don't always have the uh, proper equipment to do these kind of high elevation jobs. But if you can be tied in in any way from a high point with a harness and a rope, pretty much you're going to be safe. Here I am having to tarp it up because I'm not quite uh, dried in yet and I've got all my trusses in. I'm trying to keep it a little bit dry. This is a couple snaps just from a website. I just want to let you know if you're going to engineer stairs, there's a lot of math involved. The rise and the run and the, and the, and the length uh, that you have to do it. You need to do some math here and I'm just showing that there are ways of calculating this on the web these days that can give you your steps and your and your joist for your stairs and everything uh, and, and help you get nice strong stairs. This is the only reason I'm putting these in here to show you I didn't do all this by hand. I did do some engineering online. Uh, you, you don't have to pay. It's pretty much you can get some things for free. There are some options to pay for some uh, additional benefits but you can pretty much engineer stairs on the web. And um, I had never done stairs before, and it worked out this for me. Here I am putting the, uh, the sheathing up on top. You can see I'm tied in still. I'm up there with the uh, nail gun, laying it up there, hauling each of those sheets up there by myself was no easy job, but uh, it worked. Starting to get a little bit of shade in here because we've got some uh, roofing on. I'm just showing you the inside in its current state. There's not a whole lot to see here other than inside of a hardy board. My tarp up there after having to, to cover it up a couple times so I didn't get my uh, roof sheeting too wet in any sort of rain. It is a summer in Florida. Yeah, here just starting to show more and more sheathing up once you get the uh, the roof plywood up, you got a few edges. You can see I did the bottom and the top and then I cut the pieces for the angles later. That's a pretty good shot there where you can see how I'm doing all the big pieces at once and then cutting it. My 50th birthday did happen while I was in the middle of this project and my wife took advantage of the situation of decorating my man cave uh, with lots of pink and flamingos. In any case, I thought I would put these in here because she put a lot of effort decorating and it looked great. Starting to get some trim on the edges there. You can see uh, with the gutter trim and the aluminum on the side, getting a little bit of white on the edges looks good. And uh, no windows yet, but the doors are cut open. The windows are cut. All the uh, plywood is on top. And here comes the tar paper. I didn't do any sort of fancy stuff. I just did the regular old tar paper here. This is the only other time I had additional help. My son here uh, helping me heave these shingles. Uh, any of you have, have left a full flat of shingles know they are heavy and getting them to the top of a 14 by 28 gambrel shed is not something you would want to do by yourself after your 50th birthday. But once they were up there, I was able to actually do most of the work here, standing, tied in, and just working from the bottom up, shingling. I've never done shingling in my life. I'm not a professional. I basically followed the instructions, watched a lot of YouTube videos, and I, I think I did uh, an adequate job. Uh, everything worked out pretty square. I didn't have any funny lines or anything. The tar paper, you know, was you know a little tricky to deal with on some of those steep angles, but you know, it, it worked out okay. Here I am again showing how useful that oak tree was overhead. I'm tied in, uh, finishing up those shingles up on the top edges uh, of the roof. Worked out really good. I did use all the correct nails. I did use all the correct fasteners where I could. Um, went through a whole lot of, uh, uh, of roofing nails as this project went along. This is actually not painted yet. This is just the actual yellow that comes on the hardy board. Actually, I think in this picture, I'm just showing how I used uh, those heavy shingles as a little bit of a leveling platform. All right, shingles are up. Roof uh, is framed, got some window cutouts. Uh, 
we're all dried in, and you can see I got a whirly bird installed up there. That was something I didn't get any close-ups on, but I did put some ventilation up there, and I do have holes underneath all of the eaves for ventilation. So the whirly bird on top and ventilation holes underneath all of the eaves. Cheapest windows I could find. You can see Project Source there, I think from Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, no need to put fancy windows in here. They're vinyl and cheap. They work, they fit, and uh, they open and close, and they keep the weather out. There's the stairs I ended up building. I didn't show much more than this. I got some uh, actual other pictures, but I didn't show the process of it. It's three full stringers um, as engineered. I got a little bit of a turning platform. The turning platform was required just for the rise I needed. I needed to get some vertical before I started going up. There's not a whole lot of room once you get up there, but you can see as I climb these stairs, I've got a little bit of a, a lift up onto the floor. So right about at this height, if I was carrying something heavy, I could throw it up on the floor and I could get up in there. And once you're up into the loft, you've got a perfect vertical height here. I'm about five foot 11 and I can stand vertically in the center without hunching over and it works pretty good. I recognize at the very top of the stairs, I'm starting to reach the edge of the gambrel angle. Got the lights installed in the loft today. There's the four foot gap on the one end. And there's the, the stairs are done. Stairs on the other. I usually step onto the loft from that last second to last step. It is a little tight there on the end, but to get the rise and the run right with the width of a 14 foot shed, that's just kind of what I have to do. Two by 12s and a circular saw, that's all that takes. You can see as I'm climbing up here, that, that steep edge prevents you from getting too high. And it was of course football season, so I wanted to get a TV in there. And now that I'm dried in, I've got stairs, I'm starting to put some tools and do a little bit more work on the inside. This is the shelving apparatus I decided to do. So it's basically sandwiched plywood with a two by four in the middle jammed up on the edge. If you look really close, I've got doubled sandwiched plywood on the outside, supports a lot of weight. I've got heavy, heavy tubs on the top of each of these shelves. Got some cheap hooks I bought at Harbor Freight to hang my climbing ropes uh, on up in the loft. And then you can see in the back there, I've got some pegboard I'm already starting to put up. You can see on the left edge there, I do have a, a full 60 amps of power in here. I ran 60 amps underground with a separate substation that's grounded at the shed. And here's some custom made uh, rolling workbenches I made that I've been playing with, just trying to keep everything level and a new uh, tool toolbox back in the back left there. The shelves are starting to go up. Got a lot of things I'm, I'm starting to fit in here. I got a, a lot of stuff. Um, and there's the new, uh, the new toolbox for the shed. That darn thing was heavy and getting it rolled out was not easy. But in any case, you can see I've started to put some LED lights in here also. More shelving now, I'm putting shelving in the loft. You can see the angles here with the trusses. I'm, I'm taking advantage of every single space I can. Floor shelving, uh, storage shelving, and then shelving uh, even in the gap on the edges where I can't use to vertically hang things. Got some uh, screw and bolt bins hanging up. Uh, some steel shelving in the back, leveraging uh, storage under the, the stairs. And now I'm building my front platform. It needed a little bit of something out front, so I decided just to build a little bit of a deck. This isn't much, uh, you know, this is a, your standard deck building sort of stuff. Put some footers in there, get your, your joists and your stringers stacked and, and use some planking. Nothing fancy here, but it definitely added. I, I would recommend this to anyone building a shed. You always end up spending some time out front on the platform, you know, whether or not it's a, a chair or just, you know, kind of staging area going on the way in and the way out. Here, I don't have stairs yet. I'm just using those little jerry rig stairs just that I had on the side to get up and down. But eventually, uh, I did build some actual stairs going in and out. And it's kind of a look. Internal lumber storage. This is just the first thing I built. A whole lot of options for storage. Now you can see my final stairs I did frame on there. And then on the back, outdoor storage. So PVC pipes, your outdoor you know, things, a little bit of tin on top. Yeah, it's basically just an outdoor lumber rack. Who, who doesn't need one of these? All my scraps, my PVC, the stuff that I just didn't have room for. Got a deep sink put in there because I do have water. Hey, ice maker in the man shed. Got some outdoor power there. You can see a little bit of a table, so I'm starting to electrify it. And here I'm also starting to trim out the windows. You can see on the right, I haven't painted yet. 
So this is how it pretty much looks when I was done. I got my windows trimmed, I got my doors trimmed, I got some lighting uh, out front, I got my horseshoe installed and the horseshoe up for those of you that know what that means. And uh, it turned out great. I've done a lot more since this picture was taken. This shed was built in the summer of 2019, pre-COVID. I did this on weekends. I've got a full-time job. Uh, I didn't do any of this work during the week. I'm just saying anyone can do this. Take your time, look at the plans, and build yourselves a barn shed. It was a great project, and I would do it all over again if I had to. Have a great day.